Tonight, my guest is a member of parliament for Infantimai East and hails from Otuam in the central region of Ghana. He comes from the same hometown as our late president, Professor John Evans Atamils. Tonight, Honorable George Kuntu Blankson will walk us through his life as he explains to us the relationship he shared with the late president. Thanks for joining us. You can send us your texts and comments on our Facebook wall, facebook.com slash multi-tv Ghana or on any of our Facebook portals or by text 1760 across network. Thank you very much for making time for us, Honorable, and welcome to PM Express Personality Thank Profile. You. Thank you. The death of the late uh, Professor Mills must come as a shock to you considering the close relationship you have with him. Yes, of course. You know, it was a shock indeed because uh, on Friday, that led the Saturday to his birthday, he called me at a time of 10 p.m. when I finished my job in Parliament. And, I was and that was his birthday on that day, right? Or his birthday? The birthday was on Saturday. Was on Saturday, okay. But the day preceding the birthday yeah. was a Friday. Yeah. After I finished my job at the parliament, I was proceeding home on the motorway, and I had a call. So when I had a call, I checked it was him. And uh, he started talking to me. In fact, the way he spoke to me indicated that uh, it looked like somebody who is prepared to embark on a journey. What exactly did he say that made you start well, thinking that well, way? Well, he said, Kuntu, I said, Papa. Normally, when he calls me, he say, Papa. He say, Ebushia Penny. I say, Papa. Hmm. In this world that we are, there are so many things that affect human life. But when it affects your life, it generates bitterness. And I'll plead with you that any bitterness you had in your heart, just leave it and look up to God. And he's assuring me that Almighty God is going to open a bigger door for me. So whoever has offended me, I should forgive the person. And uh, I should maintain the discipline that I have by telling the truth and make sure that I will accord all manners of people the same treat that I wish them to accord me. And I should make sure that I should not depart from my principle of standing against injustice and make sure that the right thing is done at any time. But if human beings will not recognize what I'm doing, our dear Lord that we serve will recognize me. So he's advising me seriously that not all what they say about me are true. He has come to realization that people just sit back, formulate or concord certain stories to put on people who are prepared to serve this nation. I've learned a lot. So Kuntu, I'm telling you, I've passed through the same verification that you are passing through. But I can tell you that since we came into contact, you have influenced my life in one way or the other. And I also have done the same too because I could see a great change in you because I was somebody who is hot-headed. I mean, when People cannot say no to certain things. I will stand in the midst of the big or any kind of person I will say it. Because by virtue of my Christian upbringing, there is only one thing in the Bible that try to uphold the truth all the time. But in our community, anybody who is seen telling the truth is regarded as disrespectful. He doesn't respect authority. He always stands against people. But he has come into realization that all what is said about me it's not true. So the only advice he wants to give it to me that I should stay calm and look up to my God. And indeed, the Lord that we serve, he believe and he strongly have it in his heart that he's going to open a bigger door for me. Did it surprise you when he was speaking like that? I mean, if he calls you and you don't have a reason to be expecting such advice from him, um, did that shock you or surprise of you? Or of course, of did course. Did you ask him why this advice this no, time? Yeah, he say, he's saying that. Ask him that. What have you heard? I said, Kuntu, 
I just want to leave this advice to you so that you can use to guide your life because you have suffered a lot. You have suffered a lot. Humiliation is too much. But Kuntu, look at the way me, Professor Mez, also have been treated. But because for the Christ's sake, whatever I'm told, I treat it as something that they did to our master that we are serving, Jesus Christ. You know, I came closer to Professor Mez because of Christianity. I'm somebody, I like prayer. I'm a prayer warrior. I like prayer. So when I was appointed this university from Fantasman in 1997, then I led a team of chiefs, eminent chief from Ekunfi, led by Nana Kofienu, the Tufuin of Ekunfi Traditional Council. There was a crash between the chiefs and one of the traps, uh, what you call family heads of the Ekunfi state. So the good professor, late Professor Mills, decided that I should come along with them so that the issue, they will find a way, a manner that they will settle the issue so that we can elect uh, a parliament chief in the country. So when we came, after the discussion, then he said, I want Honorable Kuntu to pray. So I got up and I did a prayer. After the prayer and all of them have left, he called me in his back room, which is in his office at the presidency. That time he was the vice president. Then he said, Kuntu, I want you to join my team. We have a prayer team, uh, Busha Pajinasari and uh, some other gentlemen of man of God, and uh, some of his workers in his office, including lawyer Texan. It's a lawyer Texan. It's not the late Texan. He is still alive. He stays at Bachuna area there. Normally they do meet and pray Tuesdays. So every Tuesday, I have to travel from Sopon in the afternoon, come and join them in the prayer. And in fact, he took a lot of inspiration from me, and I learned a lot from him. He is somebody who doesn't talk too much. But he doesn't go, I mean, astray where he needs to straighten you. He will tell you, my brother, what we are saying is not true. What we are saying is not right. You understand? Uh -huh. So after we've lived for a while, one day... He called me in the house. Then when we sat down, he said, Kuntu, hmm, hey, Abru, if I have not come in contact with you, close to you, all what I heard about you indicate that you were a strong-headed person, you were wicked. That's what people perceive you. But when I came in contact with you, I saw that you were a different person altogether. All what you do is that you speak your mind. And I congratulated you for that and continue doing that. If people don't recognize, one day they will recognize you, your values. Because by doing so, people were just running head skater from my working place. Some colleagues whom we work with, or some people that in high authority sees me as somebody who is uh, maybe non-conformist, so they will just run to this man and blackmail me. And the popular thing that happens when the reform issue came about, they didn't know that the old professor asked me to play a role whereby we can diffuse the tension that was still. So he sent for me to go and bring somebody. Which kind of tension are you referring to? Because political tension in the, within the, our own party when the, reforms, the emergence of a reform came about. So he sent for me to go and bring a certain gentleman, which I will not mention his name. I took him to the castle, not knowing that when I went there, the old professor documented the day we went there, and he kept it in his diary. We went for DC's conference in Tamale. <laughs> when I got there, when the conference was open, <laughs> I was a demon at that time. People were pointing fingers, even my colleagues he don't want to come closer to me because they were saying that I am the reformist within the DC folklore that I'm maybe leaking information you to. Are the, you are the one who is shifting the NDC towards uh, the new NDC. Very good. Under Professor Mills. Very good. Tearing it away yes. from the influence of yes. the Rawlinses. They didn't know that the old professor gave me an assignment. So in Tamale, after the Congress, uh, what do you call DC's, uh, what do you call, seminar, 
was going on, I was subpoenaed by authorities to meet them at the residency. When they went there, openly, they quizzed me that we have heard that you are working for the reform people and we won't tell you anything. But you rather run away from the party or run away, leave the job and go. And I told them, look, I am not a reformist, but I want people to indicate where I was having meetings with the reformists. Then I called the old professor and said, don't worry yourself. The day I sent you the time and everything, I have it in my diary. Come and take it and write a petition. So he advised me, I should write a petition to the president. That time, Trial of General J.J. Rollins was the president. Then I wrote a petition to the president that, Mr. President, this is what they are, they are saying against me. So I want an inquiry into the issue. So the whole issue became a topical issue, and people tried to, I mean, they tried to blackmail me, saying that I don't respect because I want to challenge authority. But I'm not challenging authority. Some issues have been put on me. So I need cleansing. I have to claim my name. I have to claim my name. So I became worried. And even I decided to, if the party don't want me, then it's better I back out. Because I am part of those who form the party. I wasn't brought from somebody, uh, somewhere, to join the party. Because b the beginning of the party, we were there. And at the end of the party, we were there. You understand me? So this uh, late Professor Mills, advise me, Kuntu, don't worry. God has not finished with you. Always, whenever we are I'm downhearted and something is worrying me, all oh, what you tell me that Kuntu, God has not finished with you. So let's talk about your life. How did you end up in politics? Thank you very much. Like I told you, I am somebody who always stands for the truth. I'm not a, an angel because no human being is an angel. It's an angel. No human being stays without fault. I'm an heir in the one way or the other. Maybe you might not like the way I talk. You may not like the way I do things. But God has given everybody a specific mission on this earth. So that is why even the old books tell us that. It is well that all people live under a common roof with Christ. You must be able to live with your colleague, no matter what the shortfalls, because he has something that can influence your life, or you also might have something that can influence his life. By doing so, then there will be checks and balances in your life. I'm somebody who wants justice and fairness to be done to everybody. So uh, when the 1979 revolution came about, I was with Fry Lieutenant Kombensa, the lead who had a Nigerian disaster. We were based at Swedu Secondary School, June 4th. We were doing these operations there, explaining the virtues of the revolution, how it came about, why there's the need for that change. At a tender age. At a tender age. So after the revolution, I went back to school. Then after my sixth form education, then the 31st December also came. That's 1983. Then I got caught up with my colleagues, Kuku evacuation on all the things that we need to do, bushfire, uh, what do you call it, burning that came about. Then we need to replant the disaster that fell on cocoa plantation. So I was engaged in all these activities. And thank God, when we were in school, I attended uh, Aguna Duyakwa LA primary, primary school. school. Mm -hmm. That was the first international school which was built in the nation. I see. Yes, that was the first international school. So in the school, I had a headmaster called Mr. Addison. Addison. Yes. Yeah. Addison, did he uh, later teach at Suedo Secondary School? No, he's not the one. Okay. This Addison is from Biakwa. Okay. Mr. Addison, Suedo also is my, my teacher. I went to Suedo, so. Okay. Uh, yeah. I was in Suedo School of Business. Yeah. So when, <laughs> you know, in school, the teacher would come and ask, what will you do? Some would say, oh, I will be a tanker. Some would say, I will be a teacher. But I told him I will be a politician. 
you wanted it and you're a politician yes. now. And when the revolution came about in 31st, you know, university was closed. So that time, I couldn't have the chance to attend Ghana University. So after the revolution, I was invited to the castle. When I got there, I was sent to Minister of Information. That time, Josiah was the minister at that time. So when I got there, there were a panel. Robert Gardner, all of them, Professor Ansan Samboa, uh, Atu Austin, uh, my brother Kofi Tovi Kwachi, all of them were among the panel at the Ministry of Information. They were interviewed. You know me, I was from a rural area. So after the interview, I just went back to <laughs> my village. So one morning I was coming to Accra and I came to visit uh, D.S. Boateng. That time he was the director of Labour College. And he's my mentor. He brought me up politically. He, Totobi Kwache, Kwame and Dukumi, they brought me up politically. So they called me and said, Ah, are you a crazy for the Mobile Krumwa? No, I'm promoted to the Mobile Krumwa. The interview attended, you are among the best guys. So you have been selected for Cuba to go and study. Say, so, wow. So that's how come you studied in Cuba. That is it. So tell me, uh, what did you study in Cuba that and uh, how did life treat you in Cuba and when did you finish? When did you decide to come back home to Ghana? I went to Cuba 1983. We were the first batch with a kid. Yeah. Then we went to straight to into what they call the tertiary institution. We did the, the Spanish six months. After the six months, you do the, what do you call it, the terminologies also for six months, then you proceed to the actual course. So I did social scientists. And as I'm speaking to you, I speak Spanish fluently. I write it fluently because I wrote my thesis in Spanish. Wow. What did you write your thesis in? What subjects uh, did you write your thesis I in? I wrote about how we can form a workers' party in Ghana. Did you bring that idea into Ghana? Well, of course, as I'm, in the, as I'm in, the, in the process, I use that knowledge to influence my work. You know, every organizer is a social worker. Because if you know how to organize well, then you impact the knowledge that you've learned to transform the society to the benefit of the people. You understand? Uh -huh. So when I, came, when I came back from Cuba, my first appointment was Deputy Regional Liaison Officer for National Mobilization Program. I was the first deputy appointed because that time, that level was not there. So when I was appointed, I was sent to Western Region. So it's fair to say that you're a really grassroots cadre of the revolutionary I, I, system I totally, which formed the NDC. Totally, totally grassroots person. Now, Honorable Kuntu Blankson, yeah. we were talking about life in Cuba, and when you returned to Ghana, you said that your thesis was in forming a people's party. So how did life treat you in Cuba? Uh, sincerely speaking, I really learned a lot in Cuba. You know, people outside, particularly in Ghana, speak wrongly about Cuba. So even when I came back, job for me was a difficult thing. And even my own people that sent me, they see me with a different eye. Because, you know, Life in Cuba signif uh, signified helping people to develop. Was, is this not communism indoctrination? No, 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 no. I became strong Christian in Cuba. Little did I know that when I was going, I carried this uh, New Testament. So in every Sunday, I feel like going to be at the seashore or there's a river in our school. I'll go and sit there, sing praises, and pray to God with my, my New Testament. Before I left for Cuba, I was a Muslim. But when I came from Cuba, I was a Christian. Now as I speak to you, I'm an elder of Church of Pentecost. You understand? Mm. You see how God can transform human beings. Exactly. That's why I was telling you that. I came closer to Professor because of Christianity. You understand? So life in Cuba was so extraordinary insofar as knowledge impartation is concerned. That has transformed my life to be somebody now I'm speaking to you. But if you study social science in Cuba, mm. that made you, did that make you a communist or a social scientist? And then coming back, is this what has been influencing your political decisions and the things you do in politics? Yeah, because, you know, in Cuba, you are told that the people you are serving first, or the nation first, 
Let them put it in that way. So they have an adage in their Spanish, they say that. Fatherland or motherland or death, we shall win. And how do you say that in... Uh, Paltrio muerte venceremos. Paltrio muerte venceremos. Motherland or death, we shall, we shall succeed. Because you could see that Cuba is a small island. Living under the ambit of a big nation like America, but America cannot attack Cuba because of the potency of the born of unionism, how they are together. You see, when people are together, they can even kill a hero. You understand? When you decide and you are determined and you are together, you can do a spray. But because some nations or some communities always don't go by the, the, the born of unionism, Always there's a problem. I can say Cuba is a nation. When they decide this is the way they are going, all of them will follow. Because they know that that is the thing that will give them a liberation. Because always they think about the total end of whatever they are doing. The end thereof that they think about. Not immediate what they do. Don't that any good thing must start with difficulties. That is a principle. So any Cuban train who is more... I mean, imbued with the knowledge or the, the, the tradition or the, the culture or the thing that the knowledge you acquired there is a different person. So this is what you brought into the NDC. And they are, they are humanist. They always care by their neighbor than they themselves. He wouldn't mind sharing with you. But in the system that th times we see, you need, look at me, let me tell you one thing. Ghana, the cake is big, of which if you, all of us, I call each other with respect and decorum. Everybody will get his share. But because somebody wants to take it to his family, you get what I mean? He wants to take it to his family, so he doesn't want you to see it. But if the thing belongs to all of us, so when we are taking decision on the thing, don't you share with the person. Selfishness, greed, that is what is killing us. Selfishness and greed. And greed and enviness and petty jealousy, that's what is killing us. That's what is killing us. But there is not there. Once he sees you as a Cuban, he knows that you are the brother. He's, they call themselves comrades. Now let's talk about your companero. Let's talk about your family. What, what kind of family structure did you grow in? My father is a peasant farmer who is a Muslim. And I can tell you, my father had only primary education. But he was an agriculturist. He rose up to become a disease porter in Coco Service Division. And he had no problem that you became a Christian? Ah, I'm, I'm old enough to decide where I want to worship. I have my faith. He has his own faith. He might comment. But the, de the end thereof is only God we are serving. You understand? Uh -huh. My father was, he rose up to become a disease porter in Coco Service. And even he was teaching. The, 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 the graduate who comes, they, they call them AFIS, the field officers who comes under him, he takes them to the, the bush and tell them, this is a uh, solution, shoot. this is this. Look, look at the level. Very good. My mother is a petty trader. As I'm speaking to you, I've sat in Mankasim Market and I've sold what is called Juedru. My mother will be... What is that? Yeah. You know, olden days, people have a lot of lies in their head. Jew. A Jew... The Ga people will call it Kakachufa. Or, uh, what, what do you call it? They have a name for it. Ga people have a name for it. So my mother will be carrying part of it. I will be carrying part of it, following my mother. When we come back from Mankasim Market, my mother is a baker too. He will prepare the bread. Kuntu will carry the bread, go and sell it, and come back. So did you learn how to bake? I know how to bake properly. I can do you a still, cake. You still bake now? Well, now there's no time for me to bake. Because, like, you saw me this morning. Since I came, even the food I bought is still there. You saw how people were trooping the office, doing a lot of things to service the nation. So I don't have time to bake. So that is my mother. Abba Kutafana, that's my mother. And how many siblings uh, are you? How many brothers and sisters do you have? have? And what do they do now? Well, I have a lot of brothers and sisters. And they are all in their own field working. I have one in Coco service. I have a sister who is also Coco. I have some sisters at police. And, uh, they are all in uh, various vocations that they are doing.
to, 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 to help this country. this country. When you're not in parliament, what do you do? When I was not in parliament, I was the regional public education officer of NCC in Western Region. And from there, I became the district chief executive. And we lost power in 2000. So I won to be a parliamentarian when NDC was not in power. And I maintained the seat when NDC was not in power. So you can just imagine the kind of person you are talking to. You understand? Yes. And uh, like I'm saying, I have a, a beautiful wife in Takura. They call Mrs. Janet Abba Blankson, who is a, a helper who has also influenced my life up to this level. She's a very good woman. And in fact, <laughs> I always I want to give a medal because I'm somebody, <laughs> I'm, I'm very difficult. I'm very difficult, but this lady has been able to. When you say difficult, you mean you're principled. That is the thing. Mm. That's what people don't understand. Because everybody has a principle. But like when you get to a point, you have to marry your principle with the person you are staying with. You understand me? And I have about, I have about five children. The first one has graduated from UCC, BCom. The second one is doing medicine. And the third one is Infantipim, and I have twin, twins. They are there, they are in, uh, uh, what do you call it, JSS. You understand JSS this year. So you spend quite a lot of time with your family? As, the, the I nature, mean, as a busy nature, member of parliament? Yeah, the nature of my job do not allow me to spend quite of the time with them. But I have a woman who is capable, equally capable like me. And she doesn't allow the children to go wayward. If you are doing something, then she feels that you are going where what? He said, if you don't stop it, I'll tell daddy. Immediately, you give me a call. And I say, give me, let me talk to the person. And you see that they start crying. They will not repeat those things again. Are you bitter that you lost um, the party's uh, primary to represent the NDC uh, in 2012? Uh, I am not bitter. But I am worried. Why are you worried? I am worried in the sense that the vision I had to prepare that constituency to a level is being taken away. How many terms did you serve in parliament? Two terms. Two terms. Yes. And all were in opposition. And as I speak to you, within three years, I've been able to tie about six or seven routes in the area together with Professor Morris, we have been able to also come along with water. The Kunfi never saw water in decades. But within three years now, the process is on. That very soon, they will see water. Within three years, I have been able to lobby for about 17 schools to the area. Within three years, a lot of things have been done for them. And we fought for a creation of a district. So now it's a Kunfi district under my reign of office. You understand? So you could see that there was a master plan for the development of a Kunfi. Master plan. What is the master plan for the NDC now that Professor Mills has passed away? You've told us that you are a reformist. What is the master plan to reform the party after... Well, the party's leader, Professor Mills, passed on. Yeah, you know, many were said about Professor Mills. Incapable, he hasn't done anything, he's this, he's that. Now what do you see? That's why he says that the good man is never recognized until his absence. You know what President Gunfo said when he visited the president? He said, as for me, I will say it. There's anything when you say it, you are misconstrued. You heard him at the castle. But I would say that Professor Mills was father for all, so he's advising him that you should be also emulate that example. But what do we hear? And what do you say? When Professor Mills was in existence, what were they saying? The father for all, he said he is, uh, what do you call it's naive. He is this, he is that. Look at it. That brings to focus that this nation we must recognize every effort of every individual and give praise where praise is due. Give condemnation where condemnation is due. That will make us a nation. You You're see? Not talking on the level of the NDC now. That is it. You've moved away from the that NDC. What about the NDC? But I'm saying that 
the situation that has happened is an advantage for NDC because the good work of NDC is being seen now. NDC move under the leadership of what? Professor Moss. So if you are saying now that this is the achievement of the man, then why do you condemn NDC? You can't condemn it. You can't condemn it. Now people are beginning to know that indeed the man was doing a good work. But because of sheer political advantage, people were saying all sorts of things. But I'm saying that the death of Professor Mace is an advantageous for Ghana. And that is what God wants it to happen so that there will be total peace in this country. So he has been used as a sacrifice for the peace of this country.